Hi, welcome to the Oliver Fetter YouTube channel. Today, much anticipated video, I am recapping my engine rebuild from this previous summer. I dyno tested the car last two winters ago, two falls ago, I'm not sure. At any rate, I dyno tested it at the time I had propane injection on the car, which I'm now learning is a terrible idea. I was pretty frustrated with the horsepower numbers we were getting, you know, it was putting out about 70 to the wheels, so I turned up the propane a bunch while it was on the dyno, and that was not the right move, and it bent all the rods in the engine, probably because of pre-ignition. So that's how that went. At any rate, I am going to walk through all the images I have from this rebuild. And three, two, one. Okay, so here is the car on the dyno just before it got broken. Um, and here's the car right after I pulled the engine out of it. And there's the engine. I had to walk it down into the basement using so a dolly. Here I am. Got the So yeah, that was a South Bend clutch, it broke. I honestly think it broke because I drove it hard and it was a dumpy clutch. It's possible something got in my transmission and caused it to shear, but I don't think so. That was me measuring piston protrusion, which is funny because they were visibly dented into the block. I don't know why I even bothered measuring. They're supposed to come out of the block a little bit and there's one of the worst rods. Here's shots of the cylinders. I think that that looks like post hone, I'm not sure. Um, and here are the new rods I use. They're Max Speeding Rods, which is kind of a not great brand, but they're way better than these old ones. They're physically larger in every dimension, and they're called H-Beam, so they have wider sides on the new ones. Pretty happy with them, aside from the fact that I had to get the rod ends honed, because um, the pins were too snug initially. Um, so if you do end up buying these rods, good things to know is that there's two different bearing sizes. I got the wrong one the first time and then you'll probably need to have a machine shop check them so they fit right. I put new pistons on, I think 40 over, meaning like two plus sizes of pistons is what I have in my motor. Um, that's not really performance, that's just because it's been rebuilt. And here is me with it assembled, making sure nothing's binding, and it didn't. Um, I didn't replace any of the crankshaft bearings or the rod bearings because my motor was rebuilt in the last five to 10,000 miles uh, professionally, so there's no reason for me to touch the bearings. That's my paint booth. I hung it from the ceiling and painted the block silver, which I think looks a lot better. Here I am porting. Uh, so while the bottom end got rods, pistons, rings, and a general look through, the head I disassembled and ported. So here you can see the before, and this line actually comes from the gasket I'm using, which is the later TDI shape gasket. So, and here's a side by side. So you can see the before and after. It does get pretty close to like the the edge of that surface. Um, so in a few places I had to do somewhat compromise, which you can kind of see on this middle one right there, how I left a little. That's so it'll still seal. And I think I ultimately ended up putting, yeah, and there's that manifold with that shape. I think I ultimately ended up putting a teeny bit of JB weld around the outside of some of these to make sure they sealed okay. Um, just to bring that surface up a little more. And here's the head as I'm reassembling it, now ported. And I don't think this is like the craziest port job in the world, but it should make a big difference. Even just making the manifold line up correctly should be huge. And you can do this without a TDI manifold. Here's the exhaust manifold, so I, I did intake and exhaust manifolds. I wanted everything to flow really well. I ported the turbo too. Uh, to match the exhaust manifold, which you can see here. And here's a good comparison of old manifold to new manifold. Everything I did here, too, is just a die grinder, air die grinder, electric die grinder, whatever you want with a freaking burr tool. And then I went back and I cleaned it up with sanding rolls, also on the die grinder. 
Um, and there you go, there's the finished manifold and turbo combination. Also, I put a V-band flange on it just for ease of use. I think bolts are pretty annoying on turbo. And then you can see here, my old impeller had just been through a lot. Uh, so this is the cold side turbo. I think it's an impeller, right? Um, at any rate, yeah, you can see how chewed up the old one was. That bolt got in there at some point. The car's been through a lot. Um, so I replaced that with a freshy new one. You can see it's the exact same thing, just not screwed up. Pretty good. Um, all right, incoming maintenance sheet. So that was like the rough bones of what I did. I mean, bottom end rebuild, but here we go. Here's everything. So pistons, rods, ported head, intake manifold, exhaust manifold. So making things work right and seal right and make things flow better. Then I went ahead and because of the rod, like the bearings and everything in the motor are still fine and the head's fine, I just did a bunch of seals because it was leaking. So, I mean, there you go. Pretty much every seal in the motor, valve seals, new head gasket, just a normal one. I use paper head gaskets, by the way. Um, vacuum pump seal, la la la. I put a baffle in the oil pan somewhat unnecessarily. Cylinder hone, throw bearing, did some transmission work to make it not make noises. Good brakes. Yeah, this is the brake rebuild, wheel bearings because I drove it around without axles, tie rod ends, ball joints. I mean, I did a front end rebuild too. The car is like almost new. Um, I'm gonna flip back to that real quick. Whatever, headlights, oil pump. Yeah, new oil pump, that was kind of sucky. Exhaust valves and a timing belt. Bent or just a little damaged? I kind of forget what the case was. Probably not bent. I think I looked at the shafts of two exhaust valves and they were like not ideal. So I just replaced them and I put a fresh timing belt on it because of course. Uh, so then here's the finished motor. Uh, it was very pretty and freshly painted. Of course, I repainted it naturally. And here's the finished engine bay that it went back into. Here's my setup. Uh, so engine hoist, I didn't have a garage at any point for this. So I wheeled the motor into the basement on a dolly, down the stairs, and when I put it in and out of the car, I put plywood down, because I was literally working in grass or gravel. Uh, you, can take the you can kinda see my strap setup, how I put motors in and out. Generally, I use three, it's like front, other side, and back, and that way you can like, kind of adjust the angle of the motor when you're putting it in. Yeah, and here she is. Look how much space there is when there's not accessories. Uh, and there it is. That's the finished motor. So it wasn't the craziest rebuild, as you can see. Pretty much the only internal upgrades I did were rods, because the pistons are stock VW, just oversized to match my bore. And... I did a bunch of seals so it wouldn't leak head and manifolds. I just wanted everything to flow a lot better. And I think it does. I think it does flow better. I think it's less restrictive. That said, the best way to test that would be to put the car on a dyno again and see what it makes for horsepower numbers. That may or may not happen. I don't know. Uh, the last dyno test day was kind of traumatic, so I don't know if I'm really trying to do that again. So, that is the engine build breakdown. I'm not sure if I missed things or if you have follow-up questions. Please drop comments and I will see what I can respawn to. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy my videos. I'm trying to put them out on a more regular basis. And maybe, just maybe, one day YouTube might support me back in return. Um... Peace.